Yeah. Welcome back to Linux Weekly Daily Wednesdays, where we can sit back, relax, take that midweek break, and talk about all the fun things we found going on in Linux, open source, floss, all that jazz, all that brilliant stuff. I'm Vin Stone. That is one Jill Bryan, and joined every week by Pedro Mateus and you joining Hello. us live. Thanks for doing that. It's kind of neat. Uh, <laughs> what's up, everyone? We've had a big week. A lot of people have been doing a lot of stuff, Jill. <laughs> Uh, yes, definitely. Besides all our, our installs for the show. <laughs> it's awesome. Um, oh, boy. So I just got my diversity scholarship for the Open Source Summit in San Diego uh, for this August. And I'll probably do some more interviews for LWW like I did at Scale. So that'll be really cool. You're going to chase and... them down? <laughs> yes, <laughs> I'm going to chase some people down. <laughs> And I'm having fun testing my Acer 43-inch 4K computer monitor on my workbench. And now to start preparing to bring it in here and put it on this desk. And yes, it's going to go on the desk. <laughs> okay. Because <laughs> we were promised it would go on the desk, so we're still waiting. I was totally yeah. going to go I know. on the desk. <laughs> let, me, let me tell you, let me behind the scenes on that. Jill's like, we're going to put it on a one. And Steve's like, it's going on the desk. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Pedro, what's new with you, my man? Uh, not much really. I um, signed up mm -hmm. for the local surgery here, and I had to go in for a consultation. And they asked me a bunch of questions. It's like, well, that's quite the uh, the history. So, uh, when exactly do you uh, think you'll you'll get cancer? I'm like, what? <laughs> it's like, yeah, but. Both your grandparents had cancer. It's like, oh, okay. I see. I see where this is going. <laughs> so, yeah, no, it's uh, apparently my fate has been decided. And that was only like a binary consultation that I had to go in and answer a couple of questions. <laughs> well, in slightly less morbid news. Um... Yeah. <laughs> no, I've been trying to. We got the thread ripper, the thread booping system together, the little baby thread booper, mm -hmm. and been trying to break it. And all I can say yes. to that is RIP my power bill. That, <laughs> yes. Pretty interesting. Uh, it's working out so far. It's pretty cool. Having a good time with it. And uh, more on that at 11. Let's just get right into it because. Uh, what is it? What? Disco Dingo? That's is that it? Is that yep. what it's called? Uh, yes. Yay! I got it right. I was going to look at the show notes, and I was I've been calling it like weird stuff, like you know, yeah. polyester dogo or stuff like <laughs> polyester dogo. <laughs> this is kind, of, kind of the big news. Um, 1904 from Canonical is out, and yes, it is Disco Dingo, and this is 1904. It's an LTS. No, it's not. It will be supported for nine months. That is up until January 2020. If you need long-term support, do what I did. Go back and reinstall 1804 LTS. Uh, it does ship with kernel 5.0. That's great. Something everyone was happy about. NVIDIA drivers that were made in this century were shipped. That's right. Yes. That, <laughs> it's like, wow, 418 drivers. That's brilliant. They did still forget for reasons I unknown to me, bizarre moon reasons, FFmpeg is not compiled with NV encode, which caused me to love it so much. Uh, outside of that and some issues with the audio setup we have here, I kind of went screeching back and installed uh, Zubuntu 18.04 to make everything mm -hmm. nice and happy. Joel, what type of yeah. experience? Now, I will say it's running on your <laughs> box here, the Optiplex. Oh, okay. And... Mm -hmm. Isn't really outside of it completely forgot how to internet when I first installed it, but I just went back in the network and set everything back up. Oh, cool. Well, I installed it on one of my rigs and it it, it worked beautifully. I did a, a nuke and pave install. And as we been talk as we have been talking about the last few months, the much improved GNOME desktop 3.32 ships with Disco Dingo, which brings lots of performance impro improvements, bug fixes, and overall is a lot faster. Everyone has been uh, talking about it on the social media is how much faster it is now with GNOME, uh, the new GNOME. And the latest development release, Mesa 19, also comes pre-installed, which is really wonderful. So, yeah. Good on them. And uh, 
Mm -hmm. uh, you also mentioned in the notes that the NVIDIA drivers can now be selected and installed during installation, installation. which is an option <laughs> that should have been there for a yes. long time. <laughs> yes. But they finally have it, so good on them for that. And uh, I do have uh, the ThinkPad X230, which has been running the 1904, mm -hmm. just a standard edition with GNOME and everything else since the first beta was released. And I've been seeing the improvements, and I, I I feel like at this point, since that first beta came out, and now that I've run the uh, I've run the final updates and everything is you know release up to release, uh, I gave Gnome a fair shot. I gave it more than one chance to change my mind, and it's still a bloated, buggy mess. Mm. That's it. <laughs> well, you know, <laughs> I would let you get away with that if you weren't running KDE. Um, well, I'm running KDE here, but this box has got enough juice to <laughs> run that in far more. <laughs> barely, barely. Uh, I'm going to say this. 1904 seems like a very good, well-received release. Uh, if you're an end user, desktop user, go try it. Do it. Yeah. I mm -hmm. mean, that that's going to be your thing. Oh, outside of that, uh, what do we have? Oh, that's not the. We got a bunch of 1904 this week. Yes. Yeah, yes, we you do. You got an update, so everything that's based on it got one well, too. Let's keep rolling with it. <laughs> yeah. So, Pop OS 1904 is available for download with all the improvements and updates of the Ubuntu 19.04 release, but with some wonderful new features. Um, it's it's just, this is wonderful. It's not only beautiful, but it has become one of the best distros to game on because of its thoughtful innovations to classic Ubuntu. And what's really awesome is they have two separate ISOs that you can download, one AMD Intel for the latest Mesa graphics drivers, and one NVIDIA, which includes the proprietary NVIDIA 418 graphics drivers. And Lutris and GameHub are, are now available in the pop shop. And the most important one being Lutris for me, <laughs> of course. And there was something actually really amazing that I did last night. Using the live USB of Pop OS 19.04 NVIDIA Edition, I was able to game spanning three monitors with games I downloaded from Stream and Lutris with full NVIDIA hardware acceleration out of the box on a live freaking live USB. Uh, the until Talos you run principle. out of RAM. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, until I ran out of RAM. Well, what I did is I installed, I, I hooked up another USB flash drive, installed the games on that. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> so the Talos principle running Vulkan um, and Unreal Tournament and Lutris were tested as well as Proton. And it, this is just so wonderful because for years, you know, I've tried to to run Steam with the NVIDIA drivers on live, live CDs and live USBs, and it was horrible. You had to go in and edit all the configs. Even when you install, you know, Ubuntu, you have to still go in and edit configs to get multi-monitor gaming. And just way to go, System76. Uh, from now on, my base Ubuntu install will be Pop OS, because Pop OS is the best OS. <laughs> you, you don't get to say that until I, I see that you went and bought some wood panel stickers. Yes! <laughs> I got my System76 yeah, we need, uh, shirt. We need to get Jill like a, um, I don't know, curly hairdo. Uh, and uh, get her to speak in a French accent, a really heavy one, because uh, that sounded like Strider just now. It's like, oh yeah, Pop OS is the best. And uh, since both Jill and Strider uh, seem to like the distro so much, I'm obligated to remind everyone that they have released a distro that could have just been, you know, a PPA, but they did that too. And to be fair, they did do a good job with offering the different ISO, so there's that. I'll give them that. <laughs> yes. <laughs> They did awesome. a good job. Again, I mean, I like what System76 is doing with trying to an all-in-one integrated solution, and it makes sense. If you're doing the yeah. hardware, mm -hmm. do their bit of software, do their custom bits to it, and most importantly, what they've done is made it available to everyone. So Yes. That's yeah. brilliant. <laughs> Isn't that right, Apple? Mm -hmm. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> right? <laughs> They'll still try and take you to court if you install macOS on a non-Apple uh, device. <laughs> So let's, yeah. let's get to the heart, the genesis yes. of all this canonical yes. 
nonsense. We've talked about Yay. Ubuntu and its derivatives. Now let's talk about Debian <laughs> because uh, there are Yay. some new features coming to Debian 10 Buster. And um, currently, what is it? Jesse? Not Jesse. It's. I can't remember which is the one that's currently out. But yeah, Debian Buster is the next one up. And it has the release schedule doesn't have a defined date. And they say that it will be released once the, you know, the core is stable, that they're happy enough with. Do they with. have an update to your favorite desktop? Yes, they have <laughs> yes. updated GNOME to 3.30, which is only like uh -huh. one major version behind uh, what Ubuntu is putting out right now. So that's significant. Yes. Uh, they also have kernel 4.19, which is a very good call for a kernel because when I was setting up the Steam box and I was having those issues with mode setting and not being able to boot, kernel 4.19 was the one that actually fixed that. So that is the minimum kernel that you want to be running if you have a Ryzen APU. Just yeah, very good. I would raise an issue. It's like App Arbor. I mean, I'm no fan of uh, SE Linux. <laughs> Hi, NSA. Um, <laughs> but uh, App Arbor, really? I, I'm going to say this. Uh, I love number eight because <laughs> I mean, I'm going to roll. The, I'm going to truck this out. <laughs> Python two is dead. Long live Python three. Like, yes. okay, that, that's Debbie and saying that. Okay. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> That's, yeah, it is proper dead now. <laughs> Let dead, <it> go. Buried. <laughs> so. <laughs> yeah. So um, it, it was actually this is an upgrade to, upgrade from Debian Stretch, which was one of my is still one of my favorite distros of all time. Of course, Debian. Um, but yeah, as Pedro was saying, it's a faster GNOME desktop, three point three zero. And but what's really awesome is the packages move from library GTK2 to library GTK3. And now GStreamer 1.0 package kit for automatic codec installation for playing movies is installed by default, which is really wonderful. And something significant, the old OpenJDK 8.0 is finally being replaced by OpenJDK 11.0. So that actually was really big news. So this is a major, Debian Buster's a major release. So you can play Minecraft on just a default yeah. install of Debian now. Cool. Yeah. <laughs> they must have had a sale on Haterade at Tesco, right? Yeah. <laughs> can help yourself get a coupon? <laughs> uh new life new things new distros but um end of the line for Aww. one that's been around for mm -hmm. quite a few minutes yeah this is sad so oh no's fermi lab is discontinuing scientific linux and moving to centos 8 so they can unify their computing platform with other collaborating collaborating labs and institutions which does make se sense but um, literally CentOS sense. <laughs> um, <laughs> but, but anyways, this, it is still really sad, but Fermilab is going to continue to support scientific Linux six and seven to the end of their release cycles. And I was just, this, this was really sad news. I remember them being at scale many moons ago and, um, they were, guy, they were, really heavily used in the scientific sector and also in space and NASA as well. Yeah. yeah. And this one, uh, they actually specifically called out CERN uh, as they move mm -hmm. to Cent CERN and a bunch of other labs. They're going to get together and basically reinstate everything that they did with scientific analytics on Cent. Mm -hmm. And that's just going yeah. to make Cent... Uh, the <laughs> distro for any kind of uh, scientific large scale scientific. deployment. Yeah, exactly. That's, it's just the distro to go to. <laughs> yeah, that it's a bit sad, but I mean, it's it's you're still going to benefit with that lot throwing their way yeah. behind Cent too. Yeah, you know? yeah, <laughs> and they'll they'll include all their innovation from scientific Linux into Cent, and I'm I'm they had a lot of really neat apps for you know, scientific calculation and whatnot in there that weren't in any other distro. So that's yep. cool. As long as it thank runs you to, GNOME. Yes. <laughs> it, it runs the GNOME uh, Classic 
desktop, yes. which is not yes, the gnome does. shell. It's yeah. the uh, Just like the GTK three based. <laughs> yeah. Oh, <Yeah. laughs> and thank you, I to don't Arthur. Hate scent. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Thank you, Arthur, and threw that into the show notes. Yes. That was awesome. Mm-hmm. Um, good news, everyone. Finally, Yay. this is like for reals this time. We're not uh, joking. Yes. This is not a tease. This is not coming soon. <laughs> this is gay yes. live. Nineteen point. 19.04 yeah let's Four, go with that yes. we'll roll with it yeah because this <laughs> this is the refactored the long edition concluding a three-year cycle 60 percent of the code base changed 144,000 lines of code added and 74,000 lines of code removed this is a big update i mean whoa man your pages uh yeah no that is a jank when you scroll down yeah, yeah it was really <laughs> yeah <laughs> but i mean the timeline supposedly a lot faster a lot of work's been done on that uh downloaded the app in image tried it for everything that we do seemed to work it was fine no i personally the the mm-hmm. way it does the mixture split fuse with the audio and stuff like that's confusing at first but you can disable it keyboard navigation in there uh waveform editing improved key frame handling audio recording which i can't speak to it because i don't use my video editor to record audio nor should you and and a gang of other improvements however with something uh refactoring of this scale there are going to be new issues so it's good to go test it try it out like yes. I said, there's an app image you don't even have to worry mm-hmm. about updating a ppa or installing it or building it from source just run the app image try it out and report any bugs that you find uh Really, the only thing I'm waiting on from the KDN Live team, and I know it's not even necessarily a KDN Live issue, is some type of hardware acceleration for the effects and rendering, you know, some good yes. acceleration desperately. And I know you're like, that's an issue with MLT. I'm like, yeah, you're right, but still, you know, because mm-hmm. um, we are doing everything with a 12 core, 24 thread box, but I'd like to be able to do that like half yeah. the time. Yes. Eventually, I know that's something that's planned for the future, but I would be remiss if I said, grr, but ac- excellent work, team. Excellent, excellent, excellent work. Excellent work. Yeah. And uh, yeah, we really do need that GPU acceleration that would help tremendously. Um, and yeah, as Ven was saying, video clips now use separate tracks for audio video by default instead of needing to be split in the timeline. This is actually really huge, and this is industry standard. It always annoyed me when I'd move my tracks over to Caden Live and I'd have to split them uh, manually. That was always a pain. (laughs) And now video and audio tracks can be resized in the timeline as well. And there's also keyboard navigation in the timeline. And with keyframe movement, you can use the arrow keys to move the keys around. And these are, you know, default is default workflow for the proprietary video editors, um, uh, ones that run Linux and ones that don't. So this is uh, standard with with Premiere and Final Cut and DaVinci Resolve. So this is really awesome for you know uh, for professionals moving over to Kden Live to getting those tools they're used to using in in Kden Live. Mm-hmm. It's pretty interesting. Good work. Mm-hmm. Again, uh, um, Pedro, do you know how to non-linear video edit, bro? I can BS my way through uh, <laughs> editing a couple <laughs> of clips together and adding some random um, license-free music to it for people's projects. I have done that in the past. <laughs> Pedro, I using, use Katie. You, yeah, you using Katie in Live is about equivalent of me trying to use uh, DaVinci Resolve. It's entertaining. Yeah. <laughs> I mostly just because OpenShot, if it's a simple project like what I just described, OpenShot actually does a pretty good job and it's, you know, it's all there. So Mm -hmm. you could just line things up, done, check out, does this look good? Yes. Render it out, done. (laughs) All right. Uh, We got to talk about this. We talk about this about every six months, but you need to be reminded. Yes. uh, (laughs) Definitely. (laughs) I get it. I get it. I feel you. But. Linux performance, why you should almost always add swap space. Uh, This comes from HaydenJames.io. Everything we've talked about will be in the show notes on the site. Go check that out. But, you know, you're going to think back in the day, you know, it was definitely considered good hygiene to have like at least two times more swap than you had RAM. Then again, Mm -hmm. we're talking about back in the day where a big honking system was rocking like a whole gig of RAM. 
And even today, you know, I keep about 32 gigs of RAM around, but I get it like a two gig swap. It's my just in case, you know, because mm -hmm. I, we're talking about Katie and live. I've absolutely watched Katie and live choose 16 plus gigabytes oh, yes. while editing UHD mm -hmm. video on more than one occasion. I got a little handy command in there if you want to see what's chewing up all of your memory RAM on your system. Like I said, go check that in the show notes. But swap space versus no swap space when available memory is low. Jill, let's wrap about it because Linux yeah. is built from the ground up to kind of expect what the kernel is. A exactly. Little bit of is. Yeah, exactly. So Hayden James, he had a really good quote in here in the article. Even if there is still available RAM, the Linux kernel will move memory pages, which are hardly ever used, into swap space. So, you know, that that right there is important especially when you're working with large files. <laughs> and the amount of swap space you need to allocate is greatly dependent on the memory usage of the applications you are running. It's not just about memory. It's, it's about how much memory your particular applications use. So in the ones that, you know, you want to, en you want to enhance them for the apps that you're using, your swap space. So my workstations and servers that I render animation on have a much larger swap space than computers I just use for daily tasks. In mm. fact, I've been known, I have I have 50 gigs of swap space on, on my Blender, one of my Blender render workstations. And sometimes that isn't enough. <laughs> so, <laughs> but for daily Although use, I- Although if you I are would, hitting you know, swap at that point, that render is going to take about, a hundred <laughs> times as long. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, for, that that is. But the 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 projects for, are sometimes literally so many gigs large yeah. that you have to have a huge swap space. <laughs> and for regular desktop use, yeah, you can probably get by with like half your RAM. Or as the article and Jill pointed out, uh, as the article mentions, you should have. Whichever application you have that runs most often, that uses the most memory, that's how big your swap uh, should be. Like, say, yes. there's that game that you turn your computer on to play, and you've caught it using, like, 10 gigs of RAM. That's the size of your swap right there. Because if it is using those 10 gigs, then chances are there's going to be more stuff that while you're playing the game, the system knows, okay, so we're not using that, we're not using that, we're not using that, and it just dumps all of that into swap until you need it again. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, it just yeah. makes sense. And how often the system does that depends on what the swappiness value is that you have set up on your distro. Yes. And for my use case, I've found that a swappiness of one for just regular desktop gaming use, which is my use case, it's Perfect, because it's like, yeah, the stuff that doesn't get mm. used, it gets dumped in a RAM. It's like, okay. And then it doesn't aggressively go and try. It's like, okay, how long have you been idle? How long uh, ago was the last access to this particular memory page? So with SSDs getting cheaper, it's probably recommended that if you, say, have 16 gigs of RAM, mm. keep 8 gigs of uh, swap. Even if you don't know or aren't paying attention <laughs> if you don't know or aren't paying attention to how big those processes are um, using your memory, let's say a process or a game springs a memory leak and all of a sudden you hear that hard drive or you see the little blinky uh, LED go oh, wait crazy. A minute, wait, wait, the SSD whisper, you can hear those? <laughs> <laughs> no, the SSDs, I just see, like, the light go on, like, constantly. It's like, why yeah. is that LED on? Yes. Oh, you're swapping, aren't you? You're swapping. swapping. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so it's, yeah, it's usually Chrome because there's a tab there that's just using way too much RAM. It's like, oh, you're swapping now. Why is that? It's usually Chrome that's at fault. And it'll give you that bit of a buffer before you get the out-of-memory kernel panic. It'll give <laughs> yes. you that little bit of slowdown before it's too late. Um, um, yeah. <laughs> let's do a science experiment. We all have the show notes open, right? Because mm -hmm. yes. one thing I hear more often than not, they're like, well, I got Chrome or I have Firefox open and I've got three tabs open and I'm using 14 gigs of RAM. And like something is horribly wrong with your system. Because yeah. cur currently right now we have two audio servers up and running. One being Jack, we have a full 18 track DAW, another recording all that. Then we have Audacity. We have another bridge running over to OBS. That's running, that's recording, that's rendering, that's streaming. Then we have um, show notes over here on a different browser. 
how much RAM do you think we're using to do all that? Oh, and three video encoders. Also relaying video back to two different boxes. <laughs> yeah. About seven gigs. Joe, higher or lower? I this was going to say, right. I was going like to go uh, low. Oh, okay. <laughs> no. I was going to, uh, uh, five gigs. Five gigs. <laughs> what, what, 8.7. Ah, okay. okay. <laughs> Eight yeah, that was higher than our... Oh, the encoders, right? Yeah, yeah you got the encoders, so, yeah. How much are yeah, you Yeah, because right, right now, now? Uh, on this end, running, you know, not even a third of that, I'm hitting 4.8? 4.8. Yeah. Yeah. Sounds about right. <laughs> yeah. 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 <laughs> it's, uh... Because I often joke, and I'll say this is like half a joke. I'm like, I'm out of memory. Like, how many tabs do you have open? Because you almost always, <laughs> yes. always... <laughs> Almost. There's always exceptions to the rule. That's somebody who uses tabs as bookmarks. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I've seen that. I yes. have a couple of pin tabs in Firefox, to be fair. There's like five tabs that are always loaded, and uh, then I just open more. <laughs> but, but you know the ones I'm talking about. Like, where you get it. It's just, there, there are tabs yes. in there that have not been opened in you. No, I'm, I'm, yeah. Oh, unfortunately, yeah. that's probably true, too. So <laughs> that'll definitely do it. But yeah, swap. Come on. Mm -hmm. Don't be too proud. Keep a little bit. It'll save oh, you. Oh, yes. At one time oh, it yes. does, it'll be worth it. Yeah. Okay. Uh, <laughs> let's talk about a box. Yeah, it's a teeny tiny little box uh, that uh, it caught my eye because it is a an ARM board, a very simple ARM board that comes, you can buy it preloaded with a 32 gigabyte uh, SD card with the Freedom Box operating system installed. And what Freedom Box does, it basically lets you set up a home server uh, for file sharing, media sharing, for really anything that you can think of for a home server. It's a mm -hmm. very simple, very basic pre-built box that you can just plug into Ethernet, plug into power, and plug a couple of USB external hard drives to it, and away we go, because it gives you a little eh, web interface that's, uh, it makes setting up very easy. And I was looking through this, it's like, okay, so Raspberry Pi sized box with a couple of USB ports and an Ethernet connection. 82 euros seems a bit much, uh, especially when you take into consideration that the Raspberry Pi 3B Plus, it's uh, 35 euros, and you can, well, out of that, you get four USB ports uh, and a quad-core ARM 64-bit uh, SoC. So what you're paying extra here is actually for mm -hmm. not having to do the work to set the... Uh, the server yourself because it's already set you just have to specify whatever you need it to do and i guess how much do you value your time because it'll save you a lot of time but it'll cost a bit extra mm. Mm. yeah is it is a bit on the pricey side but a lot of boutique stuff like that is i mean that's, that's gonna be yeah. a smaller run it is and it, mm -hmm. it makes sense it's like okay so it's something that you just want to set up a server for someone mm -hmm. and it's like okay you give me like the 82 <laughs> euros that 82 it costs euros. wow <laughs> <laughs> and i will set that up for you i'll literally go into your place uh plug it in and ask you a couple of questions as i run through the web interface there done <laughs> sweet all right, awesome. uh, let's get into a slice of pie. Before we do that, uh, to pay the bills. Pay the bills, I like that. To pay the <laughs> bills. <laughs> Easiest way you can help us do that, keep this ad free and uh, independent, loud, live, and screaming, is to become a Patreon. We want to thank all of our Patreons, all 121 kicking us, $288 a week. That allows us to do almost an entire week's worth of streaming. Starting out with Pedro, what did you bring up yesterday? Some proton heresy. Yes, it was a uh, Dragon's Dogma, Dark Arisen, yeah, which I <laughs> was fighting with until the very yes. last moment, but it worked. No crashing yeah, either. Good. <laughs> yeah, good. Good time with that. We get to do this show on Wednesday and invite all of you to come show up with that business. Thursday, Jordan does his Canadian thing. It's terrifying. Friday, I bring mm -hmm. out the food bar. I try to get everybody mm -hmm. together and we have open game night and Saturday's our big show. The thing that started it all. Linux Gamecast yes. Weekly, mm -hmm. which is our four-hour rock block of nightmares and trains. Not necessarily in that order. 
But as a Patreon, you do get access to our Discord. That's where we hang out the other six days of the week. Come in there. Say hi. If your patrons just hook that up. Like, hello. And I'll be like, hello. Mention Pedro. You don't even have to add him because he'll just pop up. That's how it goes sometimes. <laughs> I'd be like, yeah, man, I just got home. Pedro. Pedro's like, what? Hmm? You could usually tell when I just got home because I can, start replying to the random stuff he, that people say on Discord. It. That, that's yeah. what his whiskers are for, man. It senses when people are talking about him on Discord. Jill's in there with a gang of other people. We get about 90 people hanging out, and mm-hmm. you'll get access to the audio only feeds for our shows that we do live. It's kind of awesome. I want to mm-hmm. thank everybody. For that, we also have a wish list, uh, PayPal, all that other fun stuff at letixgamecast.com. But Patreon is the thing that has made it possible to this level at this point. So thanks again for that. And thanks for listening to this commercial that didn't involve mattresses. Yes. (laughs) Bye time. (laughs) Or, you know, building building toys for kids. (laughs) Oh, great. Cherry pie. Now we're going to have that 80s songs. You're welcome, everyone. (laughs) (laughs) Aw. Well, this is a really cool utility for, for your Raspberry Pis. This is RPI slash Hunter. And this utility allows you to find Raspberry Pis on a network and update them or upload payloads over SSH. This, of course, can be used for good or evil. Mm-hmm. And make sure to change your root password in the on the Raspberry Pi. I do that with everyone that I have <laughs> because this software can go out and just automatically detect the default uh, <laughs> Raspbian uh, root and uh, disable your Pi or put malicious uh, software on there. And so it can be be uh, used for evil. But if you change yeah, those passwords, it's not just, <laughs> yeah. it's not just in a given network. It actually, yes. if you plug this into the internet, mm-hmm. it goes, oh, look at the internet. Let's uh, start poking SSH boards here and there. It's like, oh, there's one. Oh, yeah. look, it's the default <laughs> password. Now you have control of a remote pie somewhere <laughs> around the world. Uh, and yeah, <laughs> the moral of this story is always change yes. the default <laughs> credentials on your pie it's not hard to do come on yes <laughs> it's a terrifying thing that a lot of people don't think about you know you think about yeah, internet connected devices you have and the even think about the ones that you don't really have control over you don't even know like, yeah. yeah what the default <laughs> remote into that this reminds me of oh, dude i think it was last year or year before that who created a botnet using printers all the HP printers, oh, yeah, smart lasers. fridges, yes. uh, yeah. smart microwaves, basically yeah. electrical appliances that people don't really know uh, that uh, he did it <laughs> they as a have small a running SSH project, server. But he effectively <laughs> came back after the weekend. He's like, oh no. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <Right. laughs> oh man. All right. Uh, keep, keep your pie sanitary. Don't, yes. don't have dirty pie. <laughs> <laughs> and if you'd like to do something new with your Pi, uh, maybe you want to learn a little bit of programming. That we've seen a lot of stories about people learning to program with their Pies. And, well, when it comes to books and documentation on how to... Mr. Segway. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> yes, very good, Pedro. <laughs> Yay. Uh, that wasn't condescending at all. Uh, <laughs> it's the only way I know to show affection and caring. Uh huh. <laughs> but yeah, it's. I'd wish I I wish I'd had something like what oh, um, yes. <laughs> Simon Long is posting about in this particular article back when I was going through university and learning C specifically, because there basically uh, he explains that as he was learning, there was like that one book that uh, Dennis Ritchie was one of the uh, co-authors. And that was it. That was basically it. And if you wanted a really good explanation, he actually recommended the uh, the Microsoft uh, see for yourself. Uh, but you can't find that anywhere. It's not even on eBay. I looked. Uh, oh. It's yeah. It's actually very hard to find. So he's going to um, get together with some people and actually write an introduction to C and GUI programming, uh, and he's going to do it. For complete beginners, like people who never coded a single line in their life, is just going to put it out there and say, this is the book that you should be using. And it it is C, so 
you know, mm-hmm. just basic programming. Uh, and GUI programming, which uh, apparently Van took a bit of an issue to. <laughs> <laughs> First off, I, would, I, I, I would just like to say, you know, C's basically assembly with like sparkles and racing stripes. Yes. Um, but yeah, this is based on GTK2, not GTK3. And, yeah. you know, yeah, I could say, okay, GTK2 is no longer a moving target. Okay. Yeah. Fair enough. But in the same sentence, I'm like, GTK4 is about to come out. I mean, in, unless you want to get into XFCE development, yeah. Uh, shots fired. Um, <laughs> it's just Vala, which is based on GTK2. It's yeah. C with GTK2. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> this, this is a good thing to play around with. I mean, get your beak wet, get a little taste, and see yes. if it's your thing. You know, there's nothing wrong with it. But I, I didn't want to bring that out. Oh, <laughs> Jill. Well, I actually remember what was really cool was, and I was remembering. Yeah, KNR is what introduced. Hello world to the programming ethos. I mean, it because it came because of that that book, that simple statement that all coding languages use when you're learning how to use it. So, and I remember learning C in middle school in the early '80s. It um, it was a, a PDP 11 or something like that. <laughs> Actually, it was something a little newer, but that was one of the languages I learned in junior high. Well, did you have to feed that thing punch cards uphill? Both yeah. Ways in the snow? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's always yeah. fun. My mom will like throw down on me every now and then. She's like, yes, I use punch cards on an IBM, whatever. Yes. Was what she learned to code on. I was like, oh, let me take that to it. I was like, all right, I get it. Fine, I'm going to go on. Jeez, Lord, I'm off right. it now. Okay. Understood. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Uh, that's going to do it. We get a little bit of feedback, though, right? Yeah. Bit. Yes, yeah. we do. Yeah. Actually, a significant amount of feedback. Uh-huh. All right. And if you'd like to contribute and let us know, uh, maybe even add to the feedback that we got this week, or if you have uh, something that you'd like to see featured on the show. Let us know. Make sure to pick LWDW after you go to loosegamecast.com and hit the contact button. And then just fill out the form. It doesn't even ask for a CAPTCHA anymore. You just need to let us know what you want us to know. Or, you know, make fun of us. But I guess if you're going to do that, just send some hate mail to Linux Gamecast Weekly. We like that. <laughs> so, uh, make, Jill, make why sure don't you take this for condescending? <laughs> just for me. Yes. Aww. <laughs> well, this comes comes to us from Nemo or DeKresny in chat. And he says, I happened to search vector in discovery uh, and got more than your usual suspects, Inkscape, Carbon, Synfig. This time I got Gravit Designer. When you mentioned Akira, who who claimed in the Kickstarter that it was an interface design tool for GNOME That's that wasn't, all. yeah, a UI kit like Glade, it seems this also fits the bill. I was just looking for a vector tool that wasn't Inkscape. I'll tell you how it is after I've used it for a while. And yeah, um, actually, Gravit Designer is a really good one. It it is um, it is a uh, payware, but it, it's not very expensive, and it, and it is cross-platform, and um, you can also um, use it on the internet or uh, uh, download it um, for every operating system, which is really awesome. And we've talked about raster online photo editing and creation apps, but not Vector, mm-hmm. and there are quite a few new ones. Vector is mm-hmm. definitely a thing. Uh, things I've played around with, like Inkscape. Yeah, but I, yeah. I, I, here's how I feel about Inkscape. It's definitely one of those things of I had to learn how to use that nightmare, and you do too. So you, you should too. Yeah. <laughs> you will suffer along with me. But I know some people are definitely of the school of like, wow, it's commercial mm. and paid. And I'm like, it's on Linux though. I mean, I was like, hey, yeah, are, yeah. Are yeah. you as a company going to release something for the operating system? Okay, I will support you. That's how I will give you your donation. Mm-hmm. So I'm not yeah. diametrically opposed to any of that. Huh? Yeah. No, mm-hmm. and it, uh, yeah, we've mentioned that uh, when we mentioned uh, Akira, it was as a, um, not something like GTK or QT, but just something that would let you design the elements that would go into a shell. Yeah. And uh, there was a bit of an update from Nemo, so stick around. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> just after the jump, we'll get back to this. I apologize. Yes. It would have been a lot more funny if you'd left that out, but... <laughs> Spoilers. Uh, Jacob writes, Speed! 
need to, um, is there any, is there, is there an easy, well, I guess that's right, an easy way to get governors for regular use and gaming to set governors? Pedro, there is one for Feral, correct? Yeah. Feral created mm-hmm. uh, game mm-hmm. mode specifically for okay. that. <laughs> I wanted to double check on that. I never, like for the past, since forever, like the 8150, I just ran that 4.5 gigahertz, the 1700 I ran at. 3.7 all out and it's like governors no one needs no stinking governors i didn't look into governors until i got this thread record i was like man you know what i'd like to be able to afford a cup of coffee mm. at the end of the month maybe i don't want <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so upon thinking that uh i didn't there, there's a couple of ways to do it the easiest way to do it and go check in the show notes if you're like wondering, I was like, I use it. You can use uh, this kernel tools package. It's going to be available with everything. Cloud tools, uh, CPU power. You can use the frequency frequency set and put it on performance mm-hmm. or on demand. And I did find a script, which basically is just going to do this for you. Nice. And it's really easy to the point of put it in as a shell script. All you do is double click on it, give it them, give it them root digits. And it'll flip it, mm-hmm. give it the root digits again, and it'll flop it. That's all there is to it. Nice. You can read it. I mean, it's one of the rare times. I was like, "Hey, I, I didn't reinvent that wheel. Good, good old man. You actually looked something <laughs> up on the internet without wasting an afternoon." <laughs> yes. Um, <laughs> uh, you can get fancy with it, and you can actually set that script that Ven linked to basically grep for game processes you'll probably have to manually specify those unless you use something like feral that already has a list of them Mm -hmm. uh, or you just call them before uh you run the game you put it in the like launch options in steam and Mm -hmm. it'll change governor as you're playing and then as you exit it'll set the governor back Mm. uh you can also work around it and not have to put in the root digits if you give that specific script permissions to run without the root password Mm. And it'll just run and then run itself again once uh, once the game exits. But yeah, no, Feral's implementation is actually not uh, not bad. I use a similar one, but on laptops to switch whenever they're on AC power, they run in performance. And whenever they're on mm. battery, they run in power save. So, yeah. <laughs> nice. <laughs> the, well, actually, part of me is just going to let you have that one. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Your laptop never runs on AC power, Pedro. <laughs> uh, they do around here. <laughs> <laughs> no, they don't. They charge on it. That's why they have an inverter. <laughs> All the electronics yeah, but, are on these. Like I said, like I said, it sees the AC power. <laughs> Pedro, I'm didn't. just getting you back. All right. I, I, I know full well what you meant. So did everyone else, but. <laughs> <laughs> So to close everything off, hey, man, um, <laughs> well, that was short. Uh, this is Nemo uh, on yes. his vector experiment. <laughs> which you have selected in the show notes. Yeah, yes, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. <laughs> um, uh, well, that was short. It wasn't open source, and the trial version didn't work on Fedora as an app image, at least. So I didn't get much use out of it. It looked cool, though. Ah, yes, Nemo. And there was the rub. Yeah, a lot of the online ones are payware, but the demo app image worked for me on Ubuntu, and it does actually work very well in web browsers as well. But there is also, um, uh, there there are two free ones that I knew about. One is called Vector, V-E-C-T-R, and this is all in the show notes. And one is Fat Paint. And those were some of the more sophisticated um, vector image editors that can, were. Can you, you even know. get away with calling a program Fat Paint in 2019? Yeah, I know. Well, There's a graphics editor yeah. called GIMP. Yes. <laughs> Seriously. Uh, yes. <laughs> well, Fat Paint and does I treat both, it like uh... one. What's, what's your issue here, man? <laughs> Fat paint does does both vector and raster, so that that is cool. <laughs> right, it's good to know. I, it was a very short journey. I was like, I, nope, everything sucks. The world's horrible. <laughs> All's normal. Um, Although it, it's an app image, so you could probably just run that through the terminal and figure out why it wasn't. <laughs> yeah, working. Well, hey, man, there's something <laughs> yeah. to try. Let us know if that works. Um, it's going to yeah. be brilliant. But we have to get out of here. But we'll be back next week. <laughs> 
before we go, let's roll some credits and uh, thank yeah. everybody for making this yes. possible. Let's see. Is this going to work? Yeah, maybe, <laughs> maybe. Can I get to a time? Oh, let's see. Click. Yay. There it is. <laughs> Yay. <laughs> awesome. Thank you, ah. Ben Stone. Thank yourself, <laughs> and, Joe. And thank you, Pedro Mateus. <laughs> thank you, other Joe. Thank you, Joe. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> And shot room by Nemeth. Yeah, dynamic. Join us live, our Theron, Foxy, Andrew, yes. Andrew, Atomic, Mike, Barbara, and Drummer Seven, Aldius, Justin, and Hoplo. Got it, Hop. Go memory. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Reading three lines ahead. Yes. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you to our beautiful producers and executive producers. And get upset at Jill for closing a tab. That's what happened. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, we saw the tub flushing in your face. Don't worry about it. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, oh, look at all the color changes. Yeah. <laughs> we love you. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.